Hello friends, welcome to my channel once again and today we are going to learn about the Lowe's method. So basically it is a crystallographic method or we can say it is an X-ray diffraction method. So in the last few videos we have seen about the X-ray diffraction. So basically we know the X-ray diffraction is a method for, uh, for the purpose of uh, determining the structure of a particular crystal or we can say the structure of a unit cell. And uh, we have several X-ray diffraction methods and among that we have first one that is Lowe's method and we know one condition that should be satisfied if you want to uh, obey or if you want to uh, apply the X-ray diffraction method and that is what Bragg's law and that is why we have seen uh, that uh, video also in the last uh, video or that concept also in the last video that is Bragg's diffraction law or Bragg's condition and that depends on that condition only we can say uh, we will have this Lowe's method as well as whatever may be the next method that is rotating crystal method. Okay. So, without wasting time let us begin what is Lowe's method right. Okay. Yes, what I said just now that is what I have written here X-ray diffraction method we have <coughs> this one law method then rotating crystal method and powder method. Okay. So, these three methods are all obviously for the X-ray uh, de determining the structure of particular unit cell or uh, crystal, but uh, all these methods have some drawbacks and some uh, plus points or uh, that means we can say we have some uh, specific uh, extract from one method, uh, some specific extract from second and third. That means, uh, yes, here we can see in law method we have to orient or we can talk about the crystals which are single as well as polychromatic or when we say uh, it is a single crystal that means we can cannot uh, apply this method for the polycrystalline structure or polycrystals ok. And yes polychromatic means here we can have the beam that is what the x-ray beam uh, it should not be of single wavelength that is what the advantage of this law method. And yes the beam should be at a fixed angle that is what we can say the restriction to this method. Again for the rotating crystal method the lattice constant we can uh, find from this here we can only by the Lowe's method we can only find the orientation of the crystal or more specifically by Lowe's method we can only get the symmetry of that particular structure. That means when we want to check the symmetry of a particular crystal then we will go by the Lowe's method. Okay. And <coughs> obviously this rotating crystal method is used for single crystal monochromatic, but here the restriction is what you must have monochromatic x-ray beam uh, which is not required in our law method that is what the, we can say one advantages then or sometimes we can say that will be the disadvantage also ok. Right. Now, here also uh, the angles are variable in case of rotating crystal method and yes uh, those angles are should not be fixed. We can have the different angles for the uh, x-ray beam when it is incidenting on the crystal and this is what last one is the powder method. So, this is not we have we have for this our syllabus. So, we will see first of all law method. So, generally what this XRD X-ray diffraction methods and for what purpose they are used. So, yes that is what I have written here that is what generally it is used or XRD methods are used for to find the structure of a crystal. Then polymer characterization that means what for the chemistry peoples or for the industry purpose when we are talking about a polymer. So, what are, what are the characteristics of polymer and how is the structure all we can define or all we can get that data by using our x-ray diffraction method. Then again we can determine the particle size by using the x-ray diffraction methods. So, that is useful for several research purpose as well as for the industrial purpose and the determination of the imperfections in the crystal that is also important. That means, what we have some crystals, but not all, not all the crystals are perfect. Okay. That means, some crystals have some deficiencies or we can also called it as uh, the defects in crystals and those defects are uh, calculated or those defects can be found by using these different x-ray diffraction methods. Right. Okay. Now, the this video specifically or our concentration in this today's session is on Lowe's method. Okay. So, by looking at the diagram you can see here we have a goniometer okay. and that goniometer we have one particular string uh, stand on which the poly uh, single crystal is mounted. Here in case of our Lowe's method we use generally the single crystal for which we have to determine the symmetry specifically here because Lowe's method gives you the symmetry whether it is a 4 fold symmetry, 2 fold symmetry and depends on that if we have a Lowe pattern which is following the 2 fold symmetry then we can say whatever may be the crystal present here it is obeying a 2 fold symmetry. 
ok. So, the here is actually the crystal is placed a single crystal a small piece of that single crystal. We have one screen or one film for forward reflection this one and the same similar film is here and which is for the backward reflection or we can say uh, one backside reflection are there and those for reflection should be recorded and for that purpose we have this film. Okay. This beam or we can say it is a collimator through which our x-ray beam is go going to incident on the crystal okay. and <coughs> yes whatever may be the final result this is what the final result you will look like this that means what now here from the collimator what collimator does collimator makes the parallel beam whatever may be the x-ray beam we are taking from a source that x-ray beam uh, making it parallel is done by collimator. So, collimator make that and a parallel beam of x-ray now here the x-ray is a white x-ray not a monochromatic x-ray. So, white x-ray contains all the uh, wavelengths uh, or we can say all the other colors and yes this is uh, x-ray is again of not fixed wavelength, but it is a range from 0.2 angstrom unit to 2 angstrom unit. So, we can take any uh, uh, or a beam which is having this much range and more yes more it should be a white x-ray. So, that beam is coming from the collimator and yes going to incident on this particular crystal and we have some reflections from front side and the, those reflections are captured or noted on this particular film and yes we have some back reflections also and those reflections are noted or we can say plotted on the this first film ok right. Now, <coughs> what uh, Love initially does he has taken one single crystal and he kept initially that crystal steady ok right and the size is taken was 1 by 1 by 1 mm that is what <coughs> the we can say the dimensions of that crystal and x-ray yes I told already it is of the range 0 0.2 angstrom to 2 angstrom unit. So, in this method a single crystal is held stationary initially the single crystal is held stationary and then after what happens with a specific angle with a specific angle the x-ray beam is <coughs> incident on that particular crystal and let us consider one of the plane of that particular crystal is illuminated by the x-ray beam and that plane contains several atoms and those atoms are responsible for the scattering scattering of light or scattering of that particular x-ray beam x-ray from that particular atom because we know that now this angstrom unit size of the wavelength and the angstrom unit size of atom. So, now here atom acts as a obstacle in the path of light light means x-ray beam ok. So, when we have a particular obstacle and a light is coming from this when we have the diffraction we already seen the there is a basic condition for a diffraction to occur the size of the object size of the objects must be comparable to the wavelength of this incident light and yes it is valid or yes it is verified here because yes the wavelength is near about 0 0.2 angstrom unit to 2 angstrom unit and we know the atomic size is also in angstrom unit that means yes it is possible to have the diffraction of this x-ray beam from our atom and that is what here happening. So, the light is getting diffracted and those scattered rays or the diffracted refracted ray here it is coming here and when we are talking about a beam. So, not a single ray is incidenting on this crystal a beam or, or we can say the bunch of rays are incidenting and let us consider any two of the ray and if those rays are getting diffracted from that particular uh, plane atomic plane and when they are meeting on this particular film let us consider they are in phase then we can say they are getting interfered constructively and we will have the bright point ok. If they are out of phase then we will have the dark point. So, here you can see we have the uh, black point that is my, that means the dark uh, we can say the bright point and that means there is what we can say uh, they are getting interfered uh, or they are getting scattered from the atoms. and. Now, let us consider for a particular plane we are getting uh, we have got one particular set of points. Now, slowly we have to rotate that goniometer this goniometer for the next plane that means each and every side of that particular crystal should be get illuminated or should get be visible to the incident x-ray and likewise the goniometer we have to rotate slowly and so that so all the sides all the planes of that particular single crystal got <coughs> scattered. Uh, or got uh, covered by the x-rays and whatever may be the points we are getting they po those points are from whole crystal not from a single plane.
for that purpose only we have attached here a goniometer for that crystal so that we can rotate it okay again this law method generally we can say here the law method is mainly used to determine the orientation of a large single crystal okay so orientation means yes we can say in the sophisticated language that is symmetry right while radiation is reflected from or transmitted through a fixed crystal because we have both the arrangements here here it is transmitted beam and here it is reflected beam and that's why we have two different laws method or we can say two different laws pattern one is for the forward reflection and one is for the backward reflection okay this diffracted beam forms an array of spot that lie on curves of on the film yes here again one more diagram which is the law pattern the Bragg angle is fixed here what we this, uh, we know is that the Bragg condition must be satisfied uh, that is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta yes we know this n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta this is what the Bragg's condition n lambda is equal to 2d into sin theta so here this theta is known as Bragg angle so that Bragg angle is fixed in this particular law method but we can rotate the crystal okay right now, uh, so this Bragg angle is fixed for for every set of planes in the crystal means even though we are rotating the crystal what we are changing we are changing the crystal plane okay or atomic plane but Bragg angle must be same. Each set of planes pick out and diffracts the particular wavelength from the white radiation that satisfies the Bragg's law for the value of d and theta that is what we said here we have just written the uh, formula that is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. So, that equation must be satisfied. So, the planes of for, from which we are getting because theta is fixed d is fixed right and we are getting a particular uh, uh, pattern and which satisfies that n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta and then those spots will be uh, we can say bright spot on our law pattern ok. Right. So, we have I, I told you we have two different patterns or two different methods in the law method also because we have two uh, plates we have arranged those two <coughs> plates for the forward reflection and backward reflection. So, first we can say the rays which are moving in forward direction that pattern we can say or that law you can say transmission law method that method. So, in the transmission law method the film is placed behind the crystal to record the beam which are transmitted through the crystal. Now, whatever may be the beam which are recorded on this film those are the beams which are penetrated through the crystal transmitted through the crystal ok. In the transmission law method the film is placed behind the crystal to record beam which are transmitted through the crystal that is what one side of the cone of law reflection is defined by the transmitted beam. Now, see when we are talking about the beam which is coming out of this crystal now after transmission. So, we, we can say this is a cone like structure ok. So, that means that beam is coming from the crystal uh, from the crystal as a crystal as a vertex of that cone and yes that cone is we can draw or if we have a section of that cone whatever may be that circle and that circle is we can say it is drawn on this plate. Okay. So, the film or we can say on the film, the film in intersects the cone. Now, the film is getting intersect, it is what we can say the another way to understand. So, because already film is there, film is not inserting uh, insert intersecting the cone, but while cone is getting penetrated through the film. So, we can say for our understanding purpose, the cone of that beam is already there and our film is making one intersect to that particular cone and yes <coughs> with the different spots generally lying on ellipse. So, because when we say <coughs> when we have a cone and that cone if we have a little bit inclined section then we can get a ellipse. If we have very perfect perpendicular section then we will get the circle. So, depends upon uh, how the crystal is there depends on that we will have different types of structures on the film. So, this method is used to determination of symmetry of single crystal and imperfections in the crystal. I told you different methods we have and each and every method have its own characteristics. So, we have here the characteristics it is for the symmetry and imperfections. It can also be used to orient the crystals for the solid state experiment. That means, in a solid state we have to perform some experiments in which we have to orient the crystal 
in a specific manner. So, here uh, for that purpose also we can use this transmission law method. Okay. Now, for back reflection law method. So, in the back reflection method the film is placed between now if you go to the diagram initial diagram say film is placed between the x ray beam and the crystal. Okay. Right. So, here film is placed between the x-ray source and the crystal, the beam which are diffracted in the backward direction are recorded. So, which are getting diffracted because here <coughs> even though the Bragg angle is fixed, but the crystal contains several atom atomic planes and each and every atom is oriented <coughs> periodically when we say it is a crystal. Okay. And therefore, not only the atoms which are <coughs> from that side of the film are getting uh, getting illuminated by that particular x-ray, but also the atoms which are very close to the x-ray beam the, those atoms are also get uh, got illuminated and therefore, some atoms are diffracted the light in backward direction also. And so, that for that record purpose we have another film here which is between the x-ray beam or x-ray source and the crystal. Okay. So, one side of the cone is low reflection, the low reflection is defined by the transmitted beam because we know that uh, one side of that cone is defined by transmission uh, reflection method and now the film intersects the cone with the diffraction spot generally lying on the hyperbola. Now, if we talk about uh, this side, this particular way, so this we can say it is a hyperbola. So, here not whole cone is intersect by the film, but a part of the cone is intersected by the film and here generally we find a hyperbolic structure and yes that is what uh, happening on back reflection law method. So, the back reflection is only method for the study of large and thick specimens. So, for the, uh, uh, for the large specimen that means, we have little bit thick specimen of crystal then we can go by the back reflection law method instead of the transmission method. right? So, <coughs> yes, this is all about the law method, it is nothing much more complicated or we should not make it much more complicated. It is simply the crystallographic method in which we can uh, have the orientation of the crystal that means, symmetry of the crystal whether it is two fold, three fold, four fold or six fold symmetry and moreover if you have to perform some uh, solid state experiments and in that experiment you have to orient the crystal in a specific angle in a specific manner then also this method is used here we have back reflection method and a transmission method so both the methods are very useful for the determination of the symmetry of the crystal and more specifically back reflection method is used for the uh, thick and little bit larger specimen so, moreover yes the single crystal is used and obviously the Bragg condition must be satisfied. Okay. Yes guys, this is all about our this uh, today's uh, video that is Lau's method. If you have any doubt, you can post in the comment box and if you really feel this is a value addition to your knowledge, then please like this video and for more such videos, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you will get the notifications of my next video. Okay. So, till then you can watch the previous videos, uh, we will meet very soon in the next video. Take care and keep learning. Thank you.